With the growing age of social media, there is one large proponent of photography that I think gets left out of many people's workflows. Photography books. Now, I think this is multifaceted, and these mediums of art are extremely important parts of the process for a couple different reasons. The two main driving engines being owning and creating photography books. As social media grows, the main way we consume photographs, at least for the majority of us, is through a social media app, mostly thinking of Instagram. While I think Instagram is a great way for people to consume a specific person's photos or keep up to date with a photographer, say, across the world, I think it leaves out a large portion of the pie that makes photography truly so wonderful. When consuming photographs on a page, you see the photographs as they relate to an idea of a project or story. It's not just bangers that are aesthetically pleasing that get tons of likes to fill the book. Rather, the images progress a story or motif. Each photo, building on the previous, begin to shape a specific idea that the photographer had at that moment in time. Mixing a variety of different shots that move towards the same thing, the inspiration through a photography book is the first big accolade from owning and consuming these books. Because of the nature of social media, many of these photographs and stories are more of a long-form project and tend to get omitted from an app like Instagram. Whereas the slowed down, patient nature of a photography book lets you dive into all these details that wouldn't be seen or noticed when on social media. Being able to stare at a large printed photo as opposed to glancing at your tiny digital phone screen projecting the images are two starkly different experiences. Take printing photos for example. Even the difference between seeing your photos digitally on your computer versus in your hand is quite a big difference. By referencing these books, it helps you open your mind to shots that you wouldn't have ever seen on a social media app and ultimately gets your mind to think about shots in a sequence and their relationship together, or larger yet, your own photo project. I think this is quite an important yet missed process that many photographers don't think about until years down the road. By creating a photography book, you begin to cultivate your own meaningful story where the photos act as a story engine to explain something. From looking at previous photo projects, they serve as a conduit to come up with your own piece of work, narrowing your scope to aim at just a very specific idea or person or place will challenge yourself to come up with a variety of photos from wide shots, extreme close-ups, texture shots, etc. You as a photographer are looking for the whole picture and not just social media hits. While obviously you're not going to get amazing photos each time you try something new, once you process and compile all the photos for the book, you can begin to understand how much a larger photo project like that comes together and the mindset needed throughout to make a cohesive piece of work. This past summer, my girlfriend and I headed out west to tackle a two-week road trip hitting some of the craziest national parks in the US. From the beginning, I had wanted to make a photo book out of the trip. Because of my narrow focus for the book, I got a lot of unique shots that on their own aren't the most appealing, but in the grand scheme of the trip, they begin to show people and places that we were surrounded by on said trip. Additionally, being able to slowly piece together photos in a cohesive and appealing way to tell a story gave me a whole new perspective when it comes to shooting a large bulk of photos like that. I have a much better understanding of what I'm looking for, what I tend to like to shoot, and how to aim myself to achieve a good united set of photos. Now, I never actually finished the book. Once I got back from the trip, I realized I wanted to make the book a larger book about road tripping slash nomadic living, and that these photos were just a small subset of total photos but I'm excited to take my newfound knowledge and be able to apply it to road trips in the future and make an even more appealing and tight set of photos to fit into that project. What do you guys think about photo books? What books do you guys own that you love and that I should check out? Otherwise, let me know if you guys have any books you've published as I would be super interested to check them out. Otherwise, I'm going to be including some b-roll of my favorite books currently at the end here with photos from them 
so you guys can get some good inspiration. I would also love to do an analysis of a specific photo book, so if that's something you guys would be interested in, I'll pick one out for my shelf and go that route. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, and until my next video, peace out. I found this neighborhood that was something that really kind of reminded me of, you know, like the Midwest or something that was, you know, kind of like that Levittown neighborhood in, um, in Long Island, you know, the first suburb in America. Um, where the houses were all the same and you know when I found this neighborhood it was really like I was it was a real moment for me and um, you know I made pictures that first night and I've been coming back here for I mean literally for you know 10 or 11 years I, I guess the night just kind of erases a lot of stuff you know, there's a lot of negative space at nighttime and then also just the mystery of night is something that's you know intriguing to me the way the light is changed, you know, it's, you know, it's very dramatic and very different and, you know, almost kind of, you know, the way street lights cast shadows on homes, it's almost like some of them are spotlit. You're standing on the outside looking in and, you know, the lights come on and it's almost like the, what's inside seeps to the outside. There's always curtains and stuff, but it's just the idea that you're looking, you're standing on the outside and you're looking into somebody's life. basically looking for a, like a like a blank slate with with a little bit of character to it I think that a lot of times the reason I rent a hotel room to photograph in is because it's it's a place that's like you can easily like just make it look empty and make it look minimal it's you know kind of like this old moody almost Edward Hopper like you know hotel room you know everything's a little bit used there's stories you know in all that little detail A book is kind of like a paper movie, you know, it's a little, you know, thing that just sort of flows and, you know, you're telling a story, there's a beginning and there's an end, there's a middle, and uh, it goes in an order. When I get a new photograph, you know, a lot of times I'm trying to figure out, you know, well, you know, I have this new picture and, you know, where does it fit or what does it replace? I've never really nailed down or known or even really like thought way too much about what I'm trying to say with my work, you know. I'm a big fan of like really short artist statements that are kind of vague. <laughs>
or shall I say Miss Mayer, Miss Mayers, Miss Smith, or Miss V. Smith. Such were the names or aliases under which she presented herself to others. When asked once what she did for a living, she responded, I'm some kind of a spy. And she responded in a French accent, which she probably learned with her mother and grandmother, both French speakers native from saint julien en champseur And in a sense she was. She was a spy of the world, voraciously capturing what she saw, finding connections and multiple meanings, finding amusement in the irony of life which she captured however candid, sordid or tragic it could be. And her photography does present a reflection of herself, which is one we can only speculate upon, since her work was discovered by the world after she died. Regardless of this, the truth is that much can be taken from these photos. First, that the principle to pick up a camera should always be something along the lines of curiosity, to have fun because you love photography, and never for recognition, because fame, however it might meet you in life, should never be a mean, but a consequence of your work. And your work, that should be based on your vision. And if you don't like the word vision, let's use perspective. Or how you see the world. You might take inspiration from others, but should never compare yourself to others. And if you feel like taking a picture of a bin, do it. Vivian Meyer teaches us to be unique, to speak through our photography and to embody the camera as a tool that improves our speech, as an extra pair of glasses that helps us seeing the world a bit more defined. This week I'm in a pretty incredible place called Svalbard. It's an island and it's part of Norway. We're in a town called Longyear Bien, which is the northernmost town in the world. And we're here for about 10 days. I'm here because I want to shoot a little photo project about this pretty incredible town that lives super remotely. I think what makes this place so special right now is the fact that it's the dark season. So it's currently 24 hours of darkness. It's about noon right now. And you can see that it's totally dark out. There's no light here for about half of the year. I am incredibly excited to be in this place for 10 days and kind of have like an extended period of time to actually photograph somewhere. You guys know that I love photographing in the dark. So the fact that it's 24 hours of nighttime here basically is pretty exciting to me. It's also like minus five degrees Fahrenheit. It feels like minus 20. So I'm gonna try my best throughout this trip to kind of document it, share some of my photos with you. 